task-based learning Eat koha. Eat koha. Um, I'll try to uh, share a screen. Okay. Uh, I can't do it. Um, I'll have to ask my wife. Somebody else can go. Okay. Yeah, I told him to go to go on. Did you want us to do our sentences now or in small groups? I'm sorry, I might have misunderstood. Yeah, how about now? Oh okay. small groups would be the after activity. Oh, okay. I can I can do mine. Sheesh. Just a minute. It's not a um, quah, quah, sorry. Okay, away. Kaha ka, ku ka, e, eu ka, lach ask ka, quat ka yin, um, ka yin nau. Seka, seka, you ka. You kai ka guat ten kaha kwa sorry kwa ha. Tu wu se gu yet a a do you tu tu ha tank. Shah shat shat ka i i yak ah hat se tiin. Away a click a click ten clock on 
Bikuatin. Bikuatuatin. Ha kune ka ha kani utu wa gah hin ha ayak. Tle tu ha yan shu kah utle u u utle tu ha ha yajin. Gonna teach. Uh, I had a question. Um, so, a, um, a couple things like I was having difficulty because um, lots of times you would just say kahak and that would be like fish eggs in most of, in a lot of the books. But then I always knew those as fermented fish eggs, you know, kahak, and then the other fish eggs, and you see I, how I mixed them together, the two kinds, um, was the other kind was the huka iu, um, which was the ones that were soaked in fresh water and cooked. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, you could say kahak kahisi, ka kahak huka iu. So then okay. you both of them, because that that second part is fermented. Okay. Finish cheese. Ah. Uh, okay. All right. I'm gonna get it down here. I'm trying to get down to the screen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Can I try it again with my wife trying it here? Ah, kasikhi. That's it. Kasikhi. Oh, are you done? Kasin, are you done? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. Ah. Uh. Ah, it's for mm -hmm. Can you see that? Uh. Uh. Can you see that? Yeah, well. Uh. Okay. Um, when I missed two classes, I went hunting, and that's why I missed. Chosetin, chutz, chositi. Truch ikta kachach kukieti. Ye daddy day, ye daddy dach, chela tleth. Du chus iti gastin. Ya ich kitenach a kusraya. As ti a a geek nach away. Ya shaka didzati ka a shaka nach. Those are lines from Kakach Kuk. But there's bear prints, see here in the grass. Ah. From when uh, all the bears step in the same spot. So I was saying when Kakach Cook came ashore there, he never left. Okay. Gukan Khaun, Plake at Kate, Yak Dach. One bullet from uh, from my big boat. Gukan Li, Yak Gak Tusaha. Hundaka Hidi De, Baku. We Kashi Dak Asa, Aguch Tlaha. Oh, you're going to love this. We at this ea, we is, we is a shut, we clay clock away at sa e. Tlachia dak a at krakasa, 
ach tu as agu nujin a awe as i. Ask Iwe Gulakan Burger Taco Suck. Okay. Yeah, how do I get out? How do I get out of here? Uh at the hey you good. Good. Ah, yeah. Yeah, ke. Ah, gu kwan taco ak ide ya nahen. I'm getting hungry for those tacos now. Nice teach. Ah, kod nakhik e. Yak to saka, we eat it all up real quick. Yeah, awe. Nik echa. That's what? the first two deer I've gotten in six years because of my knees. Oh. I got a new knee and uh, now I can I can hunt from the boat. I got a permit to hunt from the boat. It's still hard, but at least I can go do it. Oh, okay. Glad you got a permit. I saw that sentence. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, it's for real. Plus, uh, my boat, uh, I got what they call a... Uh, now oh, no, a bartender it's a 26 foot um and it's stable in a little bit of a roll and uh it sounds blah, 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 blah. and the the high pitch sound of a uh, skiff scares the deer huh but they let me come right up to them wow yeah it's a deer killer <laughs> uh, Dan Marino, Aya, Dusai. Kagwantan Husitian. Ye awa, ya ach kak hutsu, ye tiedi, the toas goon. Sheet kak aya, our loon, we go upon. Hutsu to key away, gone yen a neek, a joe, Tessa do good ya ye that we go upon ga. Yeskasne caught a hana cow neek, play the hin de humitain. The Huni Tino our soon, Sheetka a dart. A ka away, ya do. We gooch, gooch ke ye haswo tea. Good nay a ye kin de haswo art. We gooch sha ki de. Good nay a ye hasao a hoa. Gooch, we gooch de a nach away. A dach away hasao a ya de yach. The honey yaka hoots away, hoots away. A duck after art, the duck after art, lock day. Ye said, Dick, let's a let's a after so good to her archy. The honey a duck, a duck after was so good, duck after arty. Lock day. Let's a let's a. A deak kolkain, a deak kolkain. Cut the gain a hurry good shaki de away 
Eight hini ka we do yak. It's in a yak you do a sock. Outboard I a kaye a tea. We kaina ka a kawa aka we kone a kawa juch. Ye away got the yak our yik. We were shinko. Okay. sentences <laughs> Alt kai. A khumi yuk tsa disk sha takhini ausa i A khaykh awati A khwakha a gaawe khat shawa higun Still, I Yeah, away, ya. Clear care away, which a good thing get ya at the screen key. Has say a crack or woos, does I eat to us a good is a cool or dot? Has flirting had to us a good or to suku or dot, ya? Cone a yakus a hand dot away to sneaky. Oh, yak eh, yak eh, ah. Ya a hooney, schoolish. Ya a key Ujin aya we wasakacht wush gash tutl atken ye awe ye text you do sak get kakinach a data we yuk auch de tani a joe an yachahaj in ye ji wenein we ga tesh ya to a dark just kashukush kashniki o a dat wasa ya Achshawati gant khatu wa khitsh kha kesh flirting kha kwash we we huchi ayi we wuchi in khusati ye awe kwash flirting da te ye jikach tu ne kha we akho a has to to a saku we yu khatan kas awa saku ye awe kha yata tsu kwash yi saku Isa kuke da soe a dot stuka hut the tea. Ya ye set ko a ha ach ya ye ge was hotu. Kes a dot stuka hushte. Isa kuke da soe de cock enough. 
kell a dat stöka chaste. I'm not grateful for it. Yeah, ungrateful. Yeah, it's pretty much it's one of these opposite things. Like you could say That would be I'm not grateful. So this he, he translated it as um uh that's got nothing to do with me, so I don't care. <laughs> but it was uh and he also had it on uh piss on it kind of a thing. So I thought I, we get some of the good stuff sometimes. They really laugh about some of this stuff. Um because we, we always ask around about a whole bunch of stuff. And there's these really interesting we're gonna talk uh mosses and veggies here for a bit. So there's these gray areas that I find in the language. Uh, these areas where like there's this certain set of expertise that some folks have that might not have a high number of speakers and then there's a the speakers don't have a lot of interaction with that particular thing. Uh, one example would be uh, all the different types of kelps. So as we're doing the Raven book they kept talking about these different kelps and I was like well what these got to be different kinds because they're talking about them. And if you look in some of the dictionaries, they just say like kelp, kelp, kelp. And so um, going back and sort of working with Kahuan Yish, I would show him pictures. I would go find like, a, it's not like I know a whole bunch about kelp anyways, but I would go sort of see what are these main types of kelp around here. And then we're able to sort of get through picture confirmation with him and Marge that Gish is bull kelp, Tayedi, is that bladder kelp i think they call it bladder rack and then um or yellow kelp sometimes it's called and it's the one with the little v-shaped bulbs that has a little medicine on the inside and then dao is the ribbon kelp and if it grows up towards the ocean floor and starts going sideways and it's usually called yuchi dao because the yuchi would uh wrap their babies in it while they go hunt. And then uh, su is the giant kelp. So those were like just sort of getting some fine definitions with that. And then when you come to the mosses, there was some confusion on some of those as well. So with the mosses, uh, let me make sure I'm getting this right. We've got a page here. So the moss that's on um, the forest floor is called souk. So that's if you're walking on the forest floor and you got that kind of spongy type of moss, that one is souk, which is also tall grass. And, and that's really interesting to me. Uh, then there's this, if you got a tree with a, some kind of more fuzzier kind of a moss on top of it, that moss is called Sikha on the coast, was called Khun in the interior. And that's also called diaper moss, because that's the one that was used for diapers. Then there's the old man's beard that hangs down, uh, and that one is Sikhwani. But there's this other moss um, that is called wolf moss or wolf lichen. And I, we're trying to get a name for that one. Uh, and it's a bit of a tricky thing because uh, Emmons wrote it down as I'm going over my notes here. What looks, so he had S A underline X O L with a bar I. And so that one was. Um, I don't know how, I, I guess that would be Sakhotli, but that O sound was probably, I'd have to look at his notes and see when he writes the letter O, what kind of sound is he actually documenting? And so this was used for Nahain. So it's documented in the Emmons book, but we don't know of any speakers who, you know, because a lot of people have the wolf moss as Sechwani, 
But that's when you talk to the weavers, it's a different, they don't use seichlani to get the dye. It's a different type of moss. And they'd actually have to go to other places and trade for it. So it's kind of interesting doing some of this work and trying to figure out some of these to kind of fine tune some of this stuff. Um, anyway, so I was trying to get him to ask uh, Anyasha Hash about it, and we just got this. And he gave us some other phrases. Yeah, and so we're going to check with Bessie and see if she might know and ask Kenny Grant. And I don't know who else to ask about that one. So. Okay, and uh, we can keep, if you didn't have a chance to share sentences or we've been a little bit relaxed about it too, so we can do that if you folks want to go on Wednesday or the following Monday, it's totally fine, totally fine. Uh, any other language thoughts or questions? We're going to do an activity here in a second. What was that tall grass called again? Souk. Souk. By is that? I think that's tall grass in the water. Oh, I, don't, I don't know. Chukun, so it's just on the beach, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but I think chukun might just be. So we got to do grasses next, I guess. Just like take, like take some, take a speaker out. Like, What's this grass? What's that grass? What's that? And then there might, and there could be these. I think it's common to find these things where like there's a category, and this is all of those things, and then there's specific names for some of these things. Because souk, I always knew souk as grass, but then I started hearing it as moss, and it's that moss on the forest floor. Yeah, there's a grass for weaving too, yeah, like a long piece that has. I have some from my great grandma that, like, she boiled down, and it's real pliable for um, weaving with uh, shayi wood. Oh, yeah. Well, what kind of grass that is, though? Yeah, let me see if I can find it in. Uh... Canary grass. I don't know a name for it, but that it, we use it for false embroidery and you can dye it. But what I've been told is that sort of grass is actually um, an invasive species. So I don't, I don't know, but they, yeah. I also, I remember talking with my grandpa and it was, I want to say I was in high school, which is 20 years ago. Eek. But um, he said, uh, dog salmon that swims in the tall grass was sukna khadi. And that just made a connection to the tzuch. Yeah, and like uh like they use the they use the dog salmon. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I mean, and then there's some other speakers out there. So this could be stuff like once we get into these fine categories, like and, and it's good to find good folks to work with too, who can just sort of help tease out some of this stuff, because some speakers they'll just start to get a little frustrated when we start to really get into the but i think it's helpful to sort of say well like this little bird is different than this little bird and you know and so it was always interesting like i found george and marge had a really good knowledge of like just their combined sort of knowledges were really fun to work with and then uh, a lot of times like they wouldn't know the names for certain things in English, but then once I showed them a picture, like, oh yeah, I know what that thing is, you know, and so, yeah, okay. Okay, we'll do uh, we, Huh? Away, Dastye, Shiarkadach, Ye, Ye, Ha, Yasika, Dachetea, Yeah. Sukahin, um, it's a, a, a river in the grass flats, a small river next to uh, Nakosina River. Um, um, it's called Sukahin. And she said it was uh, named for the tall yellow grass. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I think that's her name, Dastier. Uh, huh? Dastia. Dastia. Um, Phil Nelson's mom. What's what's her uh, white name? Is that Ethel Mackinnon? Ethel Ethel Mackinnon. Yeah. Uh, okay. 
Sukahin. Sukahin. Yeah, and sometimes when you look at the place names too, you start to be able to put some of these pieces together. Um, yeah, there's a few things in here for grasses. I'll have to see what else. I was looking in the Lear dictionary. Huh. Okay. Shock is uh, Timothy grass. It's, it's used for uh, weaving. Yeah, I don't know. I I'm I might have the name of the the English name of the grass wrong too. You know, because like I don't know. I don't actually know. I've been told that's what it's called. You know, I've been told what it's called before by people, but like we could all just be using the wrong name. And I just go for the grass that I know. I'm like that is the one that I was told to use, so I get that one. And <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't know what it's called, I guess, really. Yeah, because, and some things end up with sort of a local name, too, which is sort of like, uh, this is what we call this, you know, it's like, that's what we call this thing, but then it has this other, like, a, a good example is the, the Arctic ground squirrel. Like, I think most people who call it that probably aren't the ones who live near it. They, my experience is they call it a gopher, or I guess a ground squirrel, I don't know. Okay. Okay. I have a, I'm sorry, I have one more question. Yesterday I was talking with Kanak and she said, Sha Shakidach Eithini Deya Nekha Kusti. And she said it meant from the top of the mountain to the shore is our way of life. And I'm um, could you help me with the spelling on it? Okay, hold on. Um, yes. I'll do my best in the chat of what I thought. The Yanach part, I wasn't sure about. Okay. I'm not even sure if that part, if that word is what she said. It was just the best I could write down at the moment. So let's see. Shashaki. I will put a high tone on there. Eight heeny day. So the duck is always high. It's always short and high. It's always attached to the noun. And it it doesn't affect a long high vowel, but it would affect like if you said um if you said Ashuka. And if you added dach to it, you should be getting that, right? So it, it will, a short high vowel will most often get pulled long and low when you put a suffix on it. It's not the case every time, but it, most often. Uh, so here, but shaki has a long high ending. So in this case, you would just attach the dach on there. Uh, here you have H heeny, but because the heeny, so you have actually two suffixes on here. So you have heen, i, de. And there, these are both going to follow the rule of the open suffix. So the open suffix, the rule is it's opposite of the tone before it. So heen is high, so i is low. I is low, so de is high. So you can have multiple suffixes, and so you can have hini dach, hini de, hini nach, uh, and you can have those. Ya nach would probably be, because here we get into a question of whether this is along the face of it or through here. 
I would guess it's along the face of it. And this gets us to, uh, we've been starting to sort of move through this, uh, let me find it. We've been kind of moving through this presentation about uh, suffixes and bases and what happens. So this ya, which is right here, when you put dach, it stays high. So it goes long and high, and you get ya dach and ya dach. So here you've got from right here, or in this case, nach, sorry. So you get through right here. So there, you might say this for like uh, something came right through here, like a bird flew right past me or something, and then you get ya nach. Uh, then we'll go down, so you've got G, uh, here's A, SH, K, YA. So this one is the face of something, the vertical surface. And here you get YA, NACH. And I would think of it as this one. Uh, this is also the one you would use for going past something. Like to say, we're, I drove past your house. IHITI YA, NACH, and this one, this one does get pushed long and low. Uh, it does have, uh, just like ka, there's another version where they're both just short and low. So that's something that both of these share. So where's the, I think it's up here. I lost track of where it's at, the ka one. Oh, there it is, right above it. So here you have ka nach or ka nach either one. So this ka does usually get pushed. Uh, it just gets stretched out long and low, but not every time. So like when you look at these, it's just sort of, and, and these aren't make or break things. These are just like the fine tuning of the instruments. Like every now and then you've got to touch in on, on these things. I would probably say it's this one. And then you just got to listen. Do you hear it going long and then short high? So is it going ya yeah, nach? Or is it going yanach? And, and they both mean the same thing. It's just a, a speaker preference in terms of how they like to say that. It was recorded. I'll find it on, on Facebook. Okay. So I would probably say that this is this is it. Sha shaki dach et hini de yanachakusti. Yeah, that's a good one. Can I just uh, ask you one more, Kune, oh. on the subject? Um, <clears throat> I was trying to translate Ach uh, Mudi Khan today. And uh, the Ach, I, I know how I translated it, but uh, it can probably mean a couple of different things there, eh? And how would you? How would you figure out uh, what it means? Is that like I was standing there? Uh, I think it means uh, the way I tr translated it was um, after that he stood up. Oh. So, uh, I mean, that, that was my first guess would have been there, but I didn't know if underline X made sense. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it could be from there or uh, after that, I think. But I just just out of context, I, I just said after that, he stood up, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so, well, that gets us to the uh, which is, I, I think the uh is really tricky because it, it could be it, um, but there's, it could also be that place, that, you know? And so with that all this, but it could be as well, eh? What's that? Yeah, it could be that time. So like if you were to say, it would be standing at that place, right? And maybe kind of moving around a little bit. But if you said, I would kind of expect it to be, or when people use that one to say like after it, a lot of times they'll say, and that's the sort of the little mental signal that's saying like, after this, so away, away. Um, 
etch away like those that away really gives it that nice separation which you hear from speakers a lot but yeah it gets a little tricky as far as which one you're sort of hearing so all of it um i i couldn't make sense of the underlying x for um at that place for somebody standing up because he's not doing it repeatedly he's he's standing up eh? right you know what i mean or yeah because you would expect it to be something with moving or you would also expect some sort of habitual verb like he he keeps that's the place where he's usually standing or something like that you know uh, yeah so th th there could be something going on where it's contracting or it's just sometimes when speakers are really speaking fast and in a flow sometimes like a ah might sound a lot like an ah to, to us too so hmm. Yeah, that's a, 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 if you send me the audio too, or, or tell me where it's at, I can listen to it and see what it sounds like too. Okay, that's a good questions. Okay, so here's our uh, activity. I'm gonna break us into two groups. Let me check my notes. And this is what we're gonna do. So we're gonna have a little task-based activity. We're gonna break into team A and team B or team Clark and team D or whatever we wanna call ourselves. And we are going to make a mock conversation. So feel free to be creative, uh, but you're gonna try and, we're gonna put a little time limit on here. And so the first thing that you're gonna do, and I'll tell you the second thing. So the second one will require like a response. So it'll probably just randomly assign you folks into a group i'll set it up to do that let me do the breakout rooms i'm going to create two and uh so you're all going to be assigned to there's room one and room two and here's what you have to do you're going to come up with a way to and what we're going to pretend is these are two individuals having a conversation even though you guys are all going to cook up the things yourself. So you're going to sort of collaborate to come up with a statement, and then you're going to collaborate to come up with responses to each other. So what you have to do, and it shouldn't take too long, but we'll see. You have to, um, you're going, here's a scenario. These are two people who are close friends. They've known each other for a long time, so they're totally comfortable speaking and being open with one another so what you have to do is you have to ask for help with something you get to decide what that thing is but it has to be kind of specific like don't just say that's not the task the task is to come up with you're asking for help with something specific but you all get to decide what that specific thing is However, there's 10 people in each room, so uh, we'll see how this goes. Maybe next time we do it, we'll break into four groups. But for now, we've got two teams of 10. Uh, let's see, I will give you, what do you need, three minutes? Is that long enough? Okay, okay. you'll have five minutes to come up with, and, and feel free, talk it out. Um, Try and work together, collaborate. I'm gonna open the rooms and start the timer. I'm gonna pause the recording. Oops, not live stream. Okay, to recap, uh, we're gonna be crafting two parallel conversations with kind of random groups. We'll see how this goes. Uh, your first task was to come up with the phrase help me with blank or I need help with blank. So you're supposed to come up with some specific thing that you need help with. So what did team one come up with? Group two, okay. Who's group one? 
we kashkit a ya washin yeti kwa slik ach it a she the one who writes the machine is i broke it help me oh the writing machine is that it like the printer uh we we kashkit a ya washin yeti Got it. Okay, so yeah, kashit a washin yeti wuchlich achit dishi. Is that correct? Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Goodness, cheese. Oh, kashuk kashiti at. Oh. A camera is called on Katushit at. Yeah, yeah, okay. Kashit Rashim. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Kashit Rashim, yeah, yeah, T. Wutli, ach, eat, 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 I'll put this into the chat. And, oh wait, hold on. Okay. There's the first part of the conversation from group one. Group dech, dasa kai shechit choa. Cat box a cock cock shaheed. Oh, you can. At Hosei Kodach, a heated the shee a high. Oh, you can. Good cheese. At Hosei. We might say Kodach at Hosei. Or Kodach at Ha at Hosei. A heed. A heed it the shee. Yechai, okay, okay, and you might say Yechai. Okay, goodness, cheesh. So, uh, the groups are going to be split up differently this time, but we're still going to have group one and group two. So here is the confusing part, guaranteed to cause confusion. If you are group one. You will compose a response to the second statement. So group one will respond to cooking too much food. Group two will respond to the broken printer. And this is what you have to say. I would like to help you, but I can't because blank. I would like to help you, but I can't. And then come up with some reason. Be creative, whatever you want. Remember, these two people know each other really well. You're just having a conversation. Um, whatever, whatever you want to say. I would like to help you, but I can't because blank. How much time you need? Five minutes? You technically had six minutes. Was that enough time? Do you need more time? I think that's good. Because then there's got to be the ticking. I, I tried to put a thing on here so there'd be like a ticking clock. But they want me to pay money. So it's like, no. So, but I have a little watch. And I'll just give you, do you see the updates when I put them in the thing? So it's like, click when it So even when it gets down to zero, you will have one additional minute to wrap it up. Okay, so you'll technically have clay do shoe in it. Engage you in it. Ah. Okay. Oh, I guess it is the same groups. Maybe look at that. I don't know how any of this stuff works. Okay. Group two answer one. Group one answer two. At day night ah.
Okay, so responses. Uh, what did Team One Shukwa come up with? You were responding to How, is How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have that. Good friends, no more, I guess. <laughs> um, awa, aya, or away? Was that the answer for cooking or for the printer? Oh, I guess this was for the, the cooking. Cooking. Yeah, we had group two had a different answer for the printer. There it is. Hashti. <laughs> Okay, and uh, group two, what's that you two words? Ach toa sugu eat kakwa de shi koa. Tash kosa kokash heed awa shi nadar. Tash dasa kosa ku. And what was the part after this? Tash kosa ku. Okay. 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 So we have two conversations developing. We're going to see how they develop. So now we have requesting assistance, requesting help with something specific, saying I want to help, but this other thing, Cha'an uh, might work really well for the turn in this. Um, and then, uh, I might suggest it for both of these sentences. And then uh, that uh, it just gives it a little bit more of a turn, sort of like um how the English structure would here using the word but. So your third, uh, let me check the chat. Oh, okay. So your third sentence is to convince them to help you. So some suggested things you might put something in there i know sometimes when i'm trying to override someone and it depends how you want to craft this right so sometimes i'll be talking with my kids and they'll say something and i'll say it doesn't matter what you want right now <laughs> so, but it doesn't have to be that forceful um means like it doesn't matter whatever this thing is uh or Maybe it's something positive. So the first one was uh, 
in terms of a response for achtua sugui i deka kwata shi adat shtuka khashti. So, come up with a response that you think would convince your friend to go ahead and help you. And then, um, all right, so this is the response. This is the response to this one. I should like color code these or something. That one to that one, that one to that one. And then, so we're going to break out one more time. Uh, we might run out of time for this one, but then you'll come back and share what your responses are. Trying to convince them to help you anyways. The rooms are open. I'll put these sentences in the chat too.
Okay. I forgot to hit the pause button. Hey, what's up, good team? Uh, okay, so on to uh, the ongoing uh, conversation here. Let me find where did I put that in here. Here it is. Okay. So we get comment, these two conversations go on. Uh, I guess I guess I could have done this a little different. Oh well, next time. So group one, your response to so your response should be to this one. And what'd you come up with? Wait, group two responded to that one. Oh, oh wait, wait, sorry, which one? Okay, so this is group one. You, you, group one had the printer, and then group two said, I don't know anything about I don't know about it. I don't know anything. And now group one needs to respond to convince group two to help them. Oh. So, we kashit a wishin ku'u yid ho'aha. Well, we said a lot of things, but this is what I added. It was Connie, Connie. Tlachwasa chatlichit yach ye iyeti. And then there were some other things that I think need to go in there, but. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody want to fill in the rest or? Or do we have ideas on what those other things could be? I think you also said, I'm so glad you're here. Oh, yeah, so I'm so, f how fortunate I am that you are here. We also said, um, Kunach Dana, Ach Chi Wu. Okay. We might say Atlain if we're saying lots, because this is a situation where Kunach might function as a, um, it might turn into like, Genuine money, like real money. Uh, yes, yeah. that big money. And then, uh, well, we're almost out of time, so maybe we'll close it off. So we could say something like uh, maybe, yes, uh, got to. Ooh. Just get a little closure on it. So big money, just buy, we'll just go buy a new one. And group two. We said, Ha'a, achite dashe, tashi ich ich. Tashi ich ich, wownies kukati. What was that other part? Wownies. Wownies? Yeah, wa wownies. Being good. Like cooking up brownies. Oh, okay. It was <laughs> wownies. Oh, gwownies. Gonna teach. B to the GW. What would that be? An A? Ah. Uh, wow. Uh, Ah. Uh, wow knees. Wow. Good. Sagwat Sagwat Kesani. Sagwat Kesani. Wow knees. There's no like there's not really like a Z. Gwow knees. Oh, gwow knees. Gwow knees. Okay. 
Kukati, oh, Kukati. Kukati, Yawa. Yak egg and cheese, skipping kay, a cool away a corner. What a good thought to cook up to a yet a yak. So we'll chat maybe just real quick about how it went. I, I think just trying to do stuff like this now and then to just try a little bit of um, problem solving and sort of group collaboration on how to come up with a sentence and a response in a purely fictional exercise. And then we'll try to think of some other things in the future that can kind of help. And we might try like smaller groups or we can talk about what might improve the process and um, yeah, any feedback? Lots of people contributed ideas. Okay. Yeah, and so I, I think it it's fun and low pressure stuff to try and like use the language to sort of come up with things. And especially if like a scenario is already just sort of presented to you. So then you don't have to sort of try and think of what to say next because it's already been assigned in this sort of fictional context. So yeah, hey, gonna cheese you, hon. Yeah, naski gi awe uh kahwan e shu katangi dat e jakti ne. Ya suffix is tsu a dat a ya a de a gahtil kain. Ye awa achtu was a good su kakahtu ak kwash konewe yes conjugations a yakastil yeh ya a de a de dus yeh ye awa ha yu katangi. Any questions? Has ye has a yausaka. The ye, the hus should go inside of the ye. And so there's that's another thing I look just sort of the object pronouns go inside of k. So when I say inside, so like ye, ya, k, those are all pretty far left. And so those are gonna be one of the first things you say. Then the hus comes after that, or the the whoosh comes after that as well. So I, for a long time I was saying but it should be ye ye wushgachtustin and everything should be low except for the stem. Ye wush gachtustin. So just we just keep on learning. Any other questions before we go? Ye okay. Ye I have one. Oh, how do you say I will be your friend? Do you say it Ihunik Hat Gusati? That is how you say it. Yeah. And was uh was it here that someone was asking about sign language? Yes, I did. Okay. Hold on one second. I just got a confirmation from because i use sign language for my daughter mm -hmm. with speech and we are also teaching her clinket okay it's atkaduka or atkudaka atkudaka would be sign language and also uh hand hand gestures like especially so is that is that the noun that sign is, language? That's the noun. So, and you could say, I'll show you the imperfective, and we can sort of build it out from there. If we wanted to get the full, I think it is documented in Carrie's database. Um, but so that shows you right there the imperfective. And this is also for like if you're hunting 
and you're going to use hand that hand signals were used a lot, I think, in hunting. You know, and I, I don't know any of them, but I've seen them with. Uh, I watched a film on Inupiaq peoples on um, Little Diamond, and they had things for like, you know, there's a seal, I'm going to shoot it, and stuff like that. So, because you can't. So, make, how do you say? How do you say sign it? Uh, or sign. Let's see. Yeah. Let's go see if we've got it. There was a discussion today as well about the uti, and then when you have i plus uti, you get iti. And so if, uh, well, I think this came about from like hechwasa, hechwasa iti, you're okay. And if you ask, are you okay? Hechwasa ge iti. Um, sorry, I was just left off on there. So we're looking for ka. Oh, uh, I'd have to check. It might be keen to cow. I think that's a different verb. So I'll see if I'll I'll check on it. See if I can get it by Wednesday. Anya Shahash is the one who gave us this one. At kuta ka. Because if we have the imperfective, that really doesn't tell us anything. You've got to get. You got to get a. If you have a perfective, it can show you if it's either zero or na ka na ka. If you have a perfective in the future, it can also tell you. Um, usually, you can tell if it's zero or na or ka or ka, and I'll show you folks what I'm talking about on Wednesday about how to sort of look at those forms and then figure out what the conjugation type is based on that. Could you say uh at kuraka make yep. sign? Well that would probably that would I would whenever you say shayekh it's like you're asking someone to, to build it. Like they would probably construct something that does that. My guess would be do in kanaka, but I'll have to um I'll write Shkuyesh about that now because he's been working with Anya Shahash quite a bit. Or could you say do, like nay? Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, there's probably a way just to say this verb. So probably I would say, I would guess kind of call, but I'll, I'll see. Gonna choose. Ah, uh, okay. Yes. Uh, Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Okay. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Cheesh. Gunnar Che